Hey guys, Brian here with Wolf's Prairie Outdoors. I've been really happy with how the 6.5 Creedmoor has performed in ballistics tests and accuracy, and I want to start using it for deer hunting some. So I wanted to find an, a rifle that was a cost-effective rifle for a price-conscious consumer, something that's going to be accurate to allow ethical harvests, and something that's going to be reliable, but also something that I could beat up and not worry about. I don't want to haul my very expensive, very heavy precision rifle out in the woods and potentially damage it. I wanted something that I can take out there, it can get dinged, it can get rained on, I'm not going to worry about it because it's an inexpensive rifle. It's meant to be a workhorse. And what I ended up finding was the Thompson Center Compass 2. A lot of people had some negative thoughts about the Thompson Center Compass line because they had a trigger that was basically like a brick wall. It was very rough and heavy. And now they've got their Gen 2 trigger. And we'll do some pull weight tests for you here in a minute. And I got to tell you, it's an excellent trigger right out of the box. Nothing needs doing to it. Really good setup. It's better than my factory Remington 700 triggers by far. Really a good setup. And right up front, this rifle can be had for about 360 bucks without the scope, or you can get the scope package as we did here, and it's about 530 bucks with the scope. It does not include the bipod, obviously, but I've got that here so you guys can see it better. But it's really an excellent setup. The rifle has 5R rifling, so the lands don't dig into the side of the bullet. You have less bullet deformation, therefore you have less fouling, which means it's easier to clean. So you're going to have better shot-to-shot -shot accuracy and more accurate shots over time. 5R rifling is a really good system. I'm really happy that they put it on this rifle. I think it's going to be a great addition to it. Before we get too deep into it, let's look at some of the different aspects of the rifle. Up front, we have a threaded muzzle, so you can put your favorite muzzle device on or a suppressor, whatever you want to do. Coming back, as I said, we have a 5R rifling barrel. The barrel on the 6.5 Creedmoor is 21.625 inches long. Next up, we've got a Crimson Trace 3 to 9 by 40 scope and has your basic scope covers. I'm not looking to shoot 1,000 yards with this scope. I don't have to have Schmidt and Bender style glass or ride on optics or Vortex HD glass. You know, I don't have to have top of the line glass for what I'm doing. I'm looking a few hundred yards around here for this. So we're going to get out and test this at different distances, see how it performs in low light because generally our deer show up at dawn or dusk. So hopefully it does well. If not, we might switch it out. We'll see what happens. But I figured for the money, you can't beat it. And especially if you're under 300 yards, you're going to have no problem with this. I'm about positive. Next up, we have a three lug 60 degree bolt. So you get plenty of clearance on the scope when you cycle the bolt, which is really nice. I hate nothing more than having my bolt be so close to my scope that some of the cattails on the different scopes I have, if you've got it, at just the right power, when you go to cycle, your bolt is going to hit that cattail. So I love the fact this has a 60 degree bolt throw. That's really nice. You have a three position safety. Up front is fire. In the middle position, you have load and unload. So I can cycle the bolt and the rifle will not fire. But I can cycle it, load, unload the rifle all the way back. It is locked, will not fire, will not cycle. So that's good to know. As I said, we have the Generation 2 trigger that we're going to get more into in just a minute. As you can see, super crisp, and you guys saw the rifle is unloaded. Speaking of loading, you have a five-round flush fit rotary magazine. It's a basic magazine. It gets the job done, and from the shooting I've done thus far, it seems to function really well. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. So I like the fact that I do have a magazine. I can pop out of the rifle, and I know the rifle's clear. I don't have to worry about there being rounds inside a box magazine that's internal to the rifle. I just hate having to dump them out on the ground or cycle through to get them out. I just, I can't stand it. So I like having a magazine. I really like that this is included with it. And also on the back, we have a side bolt release, which is really nice. I like that over the bolt releases down here. It's a really nice addition to the rifle. I'm really excited to see what this rifle can do when it comes to accuracy. They give it one MOA guaranteed, 100 yards when using premium ammo, and we'll definitely take it out past 100 yards testing it. We also will do some ballistics testing, and if you want to see our ballistics tests, check the link right up here. It'll take you to our playlist. We do testing with three-shot groups, water, and then also shoot a Boston butt so you can see what the round will actually do when it impacts a fleshy medium, so you can see what it's going to do when you hit a deer, a hog, bear, whatnot. So give you a lot of good options there. As far as ammo goes, you can see a lot of different cat cartridges and calibers being tested. All right, now let's talk about the trigger. I think a lot of people steered away from this rifle because of the Gen 1 trigger. It was just a really rough trigger. People did a lot of aftermarket stuff to the rifles they had to fix the trigger. But now with this Gen 2 trigger, that's supposed to be taken care of. So we're going to do some uh, pull weight testing and see how it does. So, rifle's clear. I'm going to get my Lyman pull gauge ready. And 2 pounds, 3.7 ounces. Two pounds, 0.2 ounces. Two 
2 pounds, 15.5 ounces. Two pounds, 12.5 ounces. And we're going to do our last pull. Two pounds, 5.2 ounces for an average of two pounds, 7.4 ounces. So as you guys can see, this is way better than the stated pull weight of three to four pounds in the literature and phenomenally better than the Gen 1 trigger that was a very rough, hard five and a half pound pull. This is definitely well within the range of being a great trigger. I mean, it's super crisp, light, and just really a pleasure to pull. I think it's really going to be a great budget hunting gun. And I mean, 360 bucks out the door without a scope. I'm sure you guys are like me and you got a scope laying around the house, but I wanted to see what it came with. So I went ahead and got it with a scope on it. And I really think it's gonna be a pretty decent scope for what we're doing. Because like I said, I'm not gonna be shooting a thousand yards with this rifle, but you know, we may try to stretch it out and see what we can do down the road. Who knows? I mean, why not? But it's, uh, it's definitely a great budget gun. It feels good in the hand. One other thing to note, there is some texturing up here on the forend and on the pistol grip. I've heard mixed reviews on it, but I mean, it's really not bad. It's a pretty decent grip. And down here in South Carolina, you're gonna be cooking when you're out there hunting. So having something that gives you a little more grip on the rifle, I definitely like. Also for anybody wondering, it's a Harris bipod up front and the feet are from Boscable Weapon Systems. This is a prototype system to put it on Harris bipods. You can check the link up here. We did an install video and also check this link here. We did a shoot using these feet and did phenomenally well, really digs in nicely. And this is the Belloc system. You can interchange the feet on here. It's a really nice setup. It gives you adaptability of a Harris bipod that you don't normally have. So I really love this setup, great system. Well, that's about it guys. I just wanted to do a quick overview on this rifle before we get started doing testing this with ballistics and accuracy later on. And if anybody has any questions, I can refer them back to this video. But if you have any questions about it yourself, or if you want to see some particular ammo tested, drop it in the comments below. We'll tr definitely try to do that for you. And I'll try to answer all the questions. It takes me some time every now and then to get back to you guys because we have a lot going on with work and the channel is growing extremely well. We really appreciate you guys following along. It means the world to us, but we will get to you. This might take a little while every now and then, but we've got some great tests lined up for this. We're going to be using 140 grain Hornady ELD match for our first test. I've heard some great reports on it for accuracy and I've seen a lot of pre precision guys using it. So I'm interested to see what it would do as far as a hunting round goes. We're definitely going to try that out first. And then we've got some other ones lined up as well. We've got some great tests lined up and I'm looking forward to stretching this thing out and seeing what it'll do. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did hit the big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and check back soon. Have a good one guys.